Hello everyone! Welcome to another IT show, IT Career Talk with Professionals, and today we have a project manager. And our guest, our lovely guest, is Miss Minri Pakapugay. Hello Miss Minri, say hi so, to our audience. Hi everyone! Um, I'm looking forward to share my experiences and at the same time, um, hopefully in the future, the potential IT people would also help them this um sharing as well to their future careers right. so I, <laughs> so let's uh, kick it off by uh, describing first what your current role is can you tell us what what you do okay so i'm currently a project manager or a technical project manager in a high growth e-commerce agency um called random group so basically, Random Group is an Australian um, big commerce um, agency which they help brands um, across the world build their e-commerce sites and at the same time um, operate in this pandemic. So basically, um, the projects that we work on are for brands na who are using their, um, their stores, their local stores, um, basically integrating it with their live store. So if you have an online store and you have a physical store, you want to do store pickups, you want to do click and collect, basically that's the service we offer. And we're using a technology called BigCommerce. So if you guys are familiar with Shopify, Magento, it's kind of the same family. So basically, uh, we offer those to brands, especially for a fast and scalable way for them to launch their website so right. that's our job <laughs> uh, very yes. interesting no? um, maybe we can ask in terms of what skills and what value is a project manager for um, what you need to have especially as you mentioned that you know clearly you mentioned technical project manager no? so uh, what do you need to you know uh, what you need to have to be qualified for this job so basically, uh, maybe we could backtrack a little. So basically, I started kasi my career in the e-commerce industry. So my first job is actually an e-commerce developer. So I had experience working with a lot of like e-commerce platform, mainly on Shopify. And then also experienced some in WooCommerce, um, other CMS platforms in e-commerce. So technically, um, syempre, the years of experience learning with handling project, handling clients, also give um, edge for me being a technical project manager. Because on a daily basis, I handle also our development team. I do the user stories, the epics, our sprints. I handle the delivery from end end to end launch. No, so um, it's also a way for you to understand then how, of course, in a client perspective, how can you translate those requirements into a website or a technical requirement? So of course, um, part of the skills that I have learned over time is how to handle, of course, the clients, how to handle stakeholders. Um, transitioning their requirements into business goals or technical objectives and translating it to the developers so they understand the very specific niche of the website or the project. So um, I think those are the most important things of being a technical project manager is of course, um, yes, of course, technical background is important, but at the same time, interpersonal skills or soft skills then are very important. Because at the end of the day, um, if the client's business depends on their website, then they're going to depend on those requirements to you. So those are the things I think you you should bring value as a technical project manager. And of course, hindi naman lahat ng technical project manager came from a technical background. Some, ano, they just shifted. Like, for example, they started as an analyst or a QA. So that's okay, di ba? As long as you understand those requirements and can, can translate it into an actual project or product, then technically, um, that's good enough for you to be a technical project manager. So I think, Yun, Sir, Sir Rafi, yun yung pinaka gist lang ng daily job ko. But basically, uh, other than that, firefighting. <laughs> so, firefight well ng mga ano. <laughs> Ayun, yun yeah, po, Sir. Very well explained. No? Um, our, our next question is, basically, since you said you need a lot of interpersonal skills, um, basically, uh, both on the client side and also on the on the team side, no? uh, maybe you can describe to us your management style. Naman. How do you manage your team? Um, I would say that I'm, I'm, they love to be around me, so medyo firm ako, strict ako with deadlines, firm ako, but I think my management style is not micromanaging because we hire developers because we believe they're good enough. So parang I don't need to every time check if the code is working, if it's perfect, it's it uh, prefactor, di ba? Ganun bagay. So I think um, 
based on a more surface level, it's all about um, giving the trust that they need in order for them to do the job well and at the same time motivating them. Um, another thing is, of course, my management style. I would say um, I also follow the methodologies as well. So we're very strict with the methodologies because we're ag agile. I, I think every company say they're, they're agile, but we're very strict with that so we don't overwork our developers. And at the same time, I'm just making sure that the developers have what they need. So especially if they're start, starting a new sprint, um, they already have what they need, like the templates, the stuff. So my job as a project manager is to make sure that everything in, that revolves in the project, the developer has it. Or if the the designer has it. So it doesn't end, end in both ways. So yun siya, sir. I think, ano, okay naman siya. <laughs> yun sinabi ko. Pero I think more, you're strict with the deadlines, but you're not strict with how things are being done. Ganun siya. And siguro one of the things that I want to further ask, no, um, sometimes kasi the rule or at least the wording between product and project manager is sometimes mm -hmm. interchange or even exchange. No? Um, how do you, in, in your own definition, are these two roles different? Are they... Uh, it's just a title thing. Um... Actually, sir, um, I actually been also a project product manager in my previous company. Mm -hmm. So actually, um, it really depends on how the company structure would work, de ba? Because mm -hmm. I mean, titles are just titles, eh. Um, it really depends on your contribution, pa rin. So some people they're titled as product manager, but they're also acting as project manager as well. Mm -hmm. So for me, um. Yung parang role lang naman ng pagiging product manager. Sometimes it's more specific to product management, like creating the product, creating the stories, um, also working with the UX team, yung nagre research, um, creating beta testing, um, deciding what, what features to launch. Medyo yung product manager, papasok na siya sa project owner. So yun yung role na medyo um, more on the ano siya, more on the feature, value creation, more on um, thinking of are we building this? Are we building that? But uh, the project manager is the one making sure that deadlines are being met, um, the requirements are being created properly, um, the um, she yung in charge of making sure the tasks are being delegated properly to the team or the development team. So yes, it's really it really depends on the organization based on their need. Because eh. some companies they need a product manager slash project manager. So medyo nakaharon talaga ng banggaan with the roles. But some company they have their own product owner, they have their own project manager. So that's fine. So at the end of the day, um, the, the titles may be um, maybe kind of overlapping in both ways. But it really depends on what the company needs and how you would make it flexible in your own um, skills and um, cr um, skills and abilities. That's yeah. But there's always a debate with that because when I started also in the industry, I wanted to know if I wanted to be a product manager, a product owner, or a project manager. But at the end of the day, it it sometimes there's an overlap, but it really depends lang talaga on what the company needs and how we're, how are you being utilized in that in such a way that you're creating value to the product or project that you're working on. Right. So right. Yun right. Yeah. Um, given the very unique nature of how you started uh, IT, uh, you mentioned you were in e-commerce uh, development, um, Shopify. Siguro one of the questions our audience will have is, um, as a current project manager, um, do you still code? Uh, is that still part of your responsibilities or uh, at this point, not, not so much anymore? Um, in my previous company, yes, I still code. Because um, there are tendencies that you want to help your team. Kasi wala kaming team lead eh. Kaya kailangan talaga, someone needs to be a team leader. So project manager slash team leader. But right now in my current company, I don't anymore. Kasi since we already have the resources, we already have the integration team, the front end team, the back end team. So my role na lang is to make sure that the projects are being delivered. Right. So, um, but basically, um, yes, um, before, it really depends on the company and what I'm hired for. So, um, nagkakaroon talaga ng comparison kasi really, Kung saan mo ta saan, kung saan ka talaga kailangan eh. But um, for some, they would prefer na management lang talaga. I'm not good at ano, coding, so management lang talaga yung kaya kong gawin. Um, but at the same time, they bring a lot of value being a manager or account manager, di ba? Pero for some companies, uh, we're very small power trying to grow the business pa. So kailangan mong rin maging team lead. So technically, um, 
may mga project managers na hands-on, may mga project managers na hindi. Pero hindi naman nagbabalue yung pagiging hands-on ng isang project manager. Eh. Dun sa way na parang nakaka-deliver ba siya ng project on time, um, nakakabagay ba siya ng value sa mga stakeholders na he's, he or she is working with. So, um, there's, and also making sure the team is motivated enough to do the project, basically. So, yes, um, hands-on but not so much right now. <laughs> Kasi may mga certain team na kami for that one. Yeah. Yes. Um, in terms of, you know, since you major me- shifted, uh, you you took the path of product and project management. In terms of uh, others, because I will want to ask, it does um, certification or advanced studies on project management help you get um, hard easier? Um, and we know, you know, the popular ones like EMT or Prince. No? Um, how do you feel about that? No, is this is it good to have or is it uh, required to have or does it give you an advantage in terms of hiring on certification? E- even for you, no, did you? I know because I looked at your profile for our audience doesn't know um, you know uh, why did you take up siguro, a certificate in AIM right in terms of startup management or you know uh, management itself okay sir actually uh, wala po PMP um certification but I really uh, wanted to get one I'm planning to get one because mm. it's also um, it's not it's not really parang ano it's not really a guarantee that you're going to get a job mm-hmm. for me yeah, certifications but it should be um, something that parang you're to certify that you know something or parang you're good at something you're really going forward to that role so parang for me parang aside and also an, a way for me to learn then the different from different project managers kasi nga sir yung when i started hindi naman talaga project manager yung path na pupuntahan ko talaga nandun lang napunta lang doon so when uh, when yeah so when yung mga iba yes they wanted to be a project manager so they get PMP they wanted to get training but others yung iba naman they were trained to go to that path or they wanted to learn that path basically and then of course um along the way it's it's also helpful because i have um professors before in school that re- they're really encouraging us to get the pmp the pmi and i really wanted to get it and at the same time the things that you would learn then from other project managers can also help you in your daily um daily work daily operations as well so yes kind of mix um yes yes in a way na experience din naman is vital to being a project manager which i have now experience but eventually um it's a good start for people who want to jump um jump into project management like get get the the certification and then afterwards get experience apply to project management you just need to show your potential hires or potential employers that you're capable enough to be a project manager right yeah. right um, you touched a little bit on this in terms of your journey already, uh, getting your experience. But um, you wanna, it, ito nga, yung, it was a journey for you that hindi mo naman initially na isip na dito yung landing mo, no? Uh, it just so happens mm-hmm. na umabot ka dun. Uh, but before that, let's say back in high school, no? Um, to some uh-huh. of our audience, from why did you take up uh, a career potentially in? You know, parang bakit ka nag naisip mo IT yung uh, IT field yung papasukan mo? Sir, funny story sir, kasi no ay high school, binibenta ko yung projects ko sa mga classmate ko sa computer oh. class. Ah, <laughs> Doon uh, lang simula. Tapos parang ginroom ako ng computer teacher namin. So basically, sabi niya kasi na parang maganda yung career pa sa IT, marami ka opportunities, oh. which is why kinuha ko talaga and I really love it and medyo turn turn pa nga ako nun eh kasi fav, gusto ko mag fashion eh hindi ko marunong mag drawing <laughs> but um, technology is para naiintindihan ko siya kasi maraming math tapos maraming logic tapos ang fun kasi na parang binabayaran ka na classmate mo tapusin yung project nila <laughs> oh, oh, ano yung ano, ano projects yun no? um, nakakatawa siya sir mga, uh, kasi yun yung mga time na uso pa lang yung mga yung mga visual basic uh, mga ganon <laughs> Yan siya kayo mga HTML, CSS. Be, may mga class kami na maganon. So parang natuwa ako. Tapos parang yung mga classmates ko, tinutulungan ko din sa project nila. Tapos nung pag-graduate ko, of course, na bigyan ako ng opportunity um, 
makapag-aral sa schools, ay hindi naman makapag-aral, but nakabigyan ng opportunity mag-study sa information system sa Benilde. So basically, um, syempre, doon na nag-start yung parang pagkagusto ko talaga sa technology. And nakaka-excite naman kasi talaga kung saan pupunta yung future as well. And then parang, of course, technology is parang always aligned with the future. Eh. So interesting siya for me. Yeah. Right, right. No? So, um, ito na nga, napili mo na uh, yung uh, information system sa, sa Benilde, no? Um, yes, po. Then afterwards, siguro ang next big question there is, uh, paano mo hinanap or paano mo pinili yung first word mo? Because it, it's very similar to, ano no, paano mo piliin yung course mo, next naman yan. Uh-uh. Kasi we know our first word sometimes is a big factor or a big uh, shaper po. of our lives, no? So, how did you pick your first word? Yung siguro yun. Sir, to be honest, um, hindi naman ako hypocrite. <laughs> Pinili ko yung first word ko dahil sa sweldong maganda. <laughs> yeah. Okay lang. Oh, <laughs> parang yung nababalita ka yan sa mga, ah, ano, oh, sa mga oh. marketing, di ba? Ah. So, parang ganun din ako, sir. Pero, ano, pero, syempre, gusto ko inline pa rin sa technology. So, first word ko is front-end developer. So, nga, yung first work ko, syempre, nirecruit ako ng kaibigan ko. Doon kami nagtrabaho. Tapos, natuto naman ako about um, front-end development. So, yun yung una ko ang naging work about front-end development. And then, basically, medyo, medyo na board board ako. So, nag-aral ako ng iba-ibang CMS systems. And then, um, at the time po kasi, ito yung pero medyo conventional din, is parang yung boss ko po kasi sa dati kong pinag-intern, nag-start po siya ng startup. So, pag uh, uh, siguro after a year ko po mag-work dun sa first job ko front end development nag-join po ako sa startup niya full time mm. so medyo weird yung career path kasi ano kasi syempre from corporate to startup then corporate again mm. pero maganda rin po kasi yung naging experience sa akin for startup kasi marami din po kaming natutunan ng multiple hats and being a solo developer there so lahat ng mga bagay na natutunan ko over time, natutunan din ng mga taong dinala ko doon, ng mga taong hinar namin. Right. So, so eh, ano siya, if ako kasi, I mean, some people kasi, yung path nila is more on like, um, susundin nila yung parang corporate na, corporate, corporate, corporate. Pero ako kasi, risk, risk, I would say risk taker ako. So, I joined a startup to learn more about how businesses would work, how handling customer escalations or clients na nagwawala. Again, <laughs> wearing a lot of hats. And then basically, um, dun po nag-jump ship siguro yung career ko in terms of project manager. manager. Kasi um, nung time na parang may mga things na in terms of the issue with clients, so kailangan ako yung handle and making sure na yung mga projects is getting done on time. So dun po talaga nag-start. Um, kung tutuusin po, kung tatanungin niyo ako, gusto ko rin po maging developer. <laughs> pero syempre, pero pero at the same time, parang feeling ko mas mas nag-grow na ako into this role. Parang ganoon. Feeling ko my my 5 years 6 year old, 6 years ago self would say na parang bakit ka naging project manager. <laughs> pero pero I mean, nandito tayo, pero enjoy naman tayo. So masaya naman ako sa work ko kasi marami ako na Feeling ko kasi na marami din ako natutulungan na team, na members or develop, developers namin sa team na mag-grow sa career nila. And eventually, um, maging batak in the future. And of course, yung mga projects na ginagawa namin, na uh, mga websites, uh, we're also impacting their business as well. So yun yung parang for me, sa pride and also parang um, enjoyment along the way. So, medyo weird career path. So, started from corporate, um, front-end developer, joined a startup to be a product product manager or head of product, and then eventually um, moved to corporate to become a project manager. Right, right. And so, um, for sure, some some of our audience will ask, uh, from corporate, joined a startup, and very clear yung reasons mo dun is you wanted to be more involved in the business and learn a lot more on the business side, the operation side. Sure, they'll ask, um, ba't ka bumalik sa corporate, right? I mean, <laughs> parang is startup life very hard? Ano yung mga learnings mo doon? And then parang na-realize mo parang, is it a realization? Is it a ch- circumstance lang? Uh, bumalik ka to corporate? Um, I w- I'm not gonna lie na startup hard is, startup life is really hard, uh-huh. basically. Parang for every entrepreneur. And also, um, 
working with my co-founders at that time, medyo mahirap talaga kasi maraming factors like um, being early in the market, not enough um, funding, mga ganon, mm-hmm. like stuff like that. Marami po talaga factors. And of course, um, syempre, nagkaroon din ng separate paths basically. So, yung ibang founders na focus sa sariling business nila or sariling um, career nila. And ako, I also wanted to still bridge my career kasi at the time, ano, bata pa naman po ako. <laughs> so, pa parang gusto ko... Oh, bata pa rin naman po ako. So gusto ko pa rin mag-expand yung skill set ko na parang uh, maybe um maybe startup for now is not a, the right time but eventually in the future. And sabi nga po nung naging boss ko sa previous job ko, um ha, bata pa naman ako and eventually in the future kaya ko pa rin naman mag-start ng business. Right. So at least natutunan ko na yung kaya kong matutunan sa startup na ginawa namin. And along the way, magagamit ko rin siya once I start my business in the future. So, aside from that, gusto ko rin na i-entail sa mga tao na parang, ano, yung about choosing a career or choosing a job. Like, um, you don't choose a career because it's it's glamorous in terms of the money, in terms of the title. But at the same time, if it's going to help you also in the future in terms of your um, goals and objectives. So when I joined the company I'm working with, I believe na parang for me na magiging beneficial din siya for my career and for my future businessman or growth. So um nagdaling din siya sir kasi may mga times sa yung mga tao they just wanted to get into IT kasi it's cool, malaki pera diyan, malaki sweldo diyan. Hindi naman ganun lagi eh. I mean, yes, malaki sweldo kasi mahirap yung trabaho, OT tayo lagi, di ba? <laughs> OT OT tayo, di ba? Pero at the same time, you're getting into IT kasi passionate ka about it and at the same time, may objectives ka as a person na parang in the in the future, siguro lahat ata ng developers or IT people na nakausap ko, they wanna be their own CEO. <laughs> they wanna be their own founders, di ba? They, kaya that's why they wanted to still learn the ropes of how the business world, work, business world would work. And walang perfect perfect path. So basically, um, if you wanna go to corporate, great. I mean, marami ka matututunan sa corporate, same as pumunta ka man sa startup, marami ka rin matututunan. So I hope, I gave light to those people thinking that should I choose corporate, should I choose startup? There's pros and cons. Pero at the same time, um, it's it. what matters is you've learned a lot of things while being there. So, yun lang, sir. Medyo nagkalayo na tayo sa IT, no? <laughs> Nasa startup and corporate na tayo. Yeah, and it, yeah. It's, it's really part of our journey, no? Um, a, lot of, a lot of IT do take that path uh, in terms of becoming a uh, uh, technopreneurs, yun yung term na, di ba? Technopreneurs, they're building products, uh, they're bringing IT to, uh, as uh, IT as a solution, no? or, or bringing value, or innovation to to the mass. No? Mm-mm. Right. Um, I, I, I wanted to ask also in terms of, now that you are, like you said, global company na siya, and, uh, well, at least it's Australia based no? how how is remote working affecting you is this like um uh, natural in a sense like you know um is this only now because global company or or you you think na uh, really remote working is the future for IT Mm, good question actually sir. Um may mga companies na they prefer na hindi pa rin remote. Oh, umulan bumagyo, magkasakit kayong lahat. <laughs> the joke na. Pero pero may mga companies na parang yun ya, like us remote kami. Um medyo iba pa rin yung physical kasi syempre I shifted from office to remote. Eh. So actually quite recently lang din ako naging 100% remote. But basically um may miss mo rin yung times na kasama mo yung mga co-workmates mo sa office. And then, usually, dun mo yung parang mas madali yung interaction in terms of pag nandyan sila sa office, makakausap sila lagi, tapos may, ano, may, may bonding times kayo, may usapan kayo na medyo, um, medyo harap-harapan, sabay kayo kumain. Pero for remote naman, um, may times na parang, um, mas mag, ano, may times na parang nade-dreadful ka kasi parang, oh, gigising ka, tas uupo ka, tas work ka, tas matutulog, tas pagtapos mo mag-work, tulog ka na lang. Tas feeling mo, nag-e-extend ka pa ng hours kasi, syempre, accessible sa iyo lahat, eh, ng trabaho right, right. mo, eh. True, true, true. Yeah. So, yung, uh, may, there were times na you get demotivated, but, 
I think um the managers that I have now is they're really looking for ways to brighten up the team. So they touch base with the team. Um they don't make them go online at a certain time. So para pag sinabing gantong hours na lang, talagang out na sila. So parang it's also a balance and creating a routine out of it. Kasi when I started doing remote, sobrang nahihirapan ako with um kailangan kong pagkagising ko mag-work ako tapos ang haba ng oras na kailangan ko i-spend kasi hindi natatapos yung work eh. Accessible kasi sa iyo kagad yung work eh. So I created a routine um, for every remote workers you have to create a routine na parang when you start at, at 7 and you eat at 6 you eat you end there and you make sure that within 7 to 6 marami man distraction marami don, marami man tao aso ah, tumatahol sa gilid or may kumakatok may nagdo doorbell you have may to create a routine oh delivery yeah. diba you have to create boundaries so at least um hindi one of the dreadful at nakakapagod yung feeling and ngayon nasa stage tayo na sobrang nakakapagod yung feeling na um para feeling mo work na lang yung nakikita mo kasi ang hindi ka rin makalabas kasi sobrang dala ng sitwasyon so for remote workers out there, you're not alone. <laughs> so for the last few few weeks, I've been I've been touching base with my friends, calling them. Because if you get lonely sometimes, and sometimes um your family is there, you have access to your family, which is good. But you get lonely sometimes, and you also want the interactions of other people, such as your friends. So virtual inuman, make it happen. <laughs> Yun lang, sir. Um. What are you currently passionate about, or like you know, um, what? How do you spend most uh, of your time? Because you know, remote. To, no? uh, are there anything else that you supplement or add uh, that you're currently passionate about, um, whether it be IT or non-IT? Um, lately, na ano, parang since everything is remote, tas parang gusto mo tipid ka, so you've been making your own coffee at home. <laughs> So I think a lot of people are trying to make their mini barista coffee at home. Parang so yun yung medyo Oh, uh, artisan coffee to not not kasi sa TikTok na mga iba-ibang coffee. So syempre parang booster mo kasi yung coffee pag nag-start yung day mo, ba? Then other than that, ano, I'm trying to build uh, my own startup as well. So oh, medyo really? may pinagtatrabahuhan na ako ngayon yung startup ko. Um, yeah, we, we just started um, launching it lately. And funny thing is, it's about no code and low code. Yeah. So, um, yung team na gumagawa kami ng mga parang plugins, templates, and also um, plugins, templates for no code. So, basically, um, if you're someone who's creating apps or websites through no code, um, gumagawa kami ng mga plugins for your apps. Parang ganun siya. Medyo, ano, medyo since feeling ko a lot of people are trying to look for side hustles in the, ngayon at the moment. So, yun yung parang nanonotice namin na maraming nag-venture into no-code. So, me and my co-founder started a no-code um, plug-in factory. <laughs> so, yun yung mga ginagawa namin quite recently. Yeah. Right, right, so, it's yeah. a lot of fun. Pero mo most likely for me, I'm the one managing the operational side, client service, um, checking the requirements, creating the cool timelines, mga ganon. Well, my partner, he's the technical co-founder now. So, he's the one creating the plugins, he's the one creating the different... Um, templates na pwedeng gamitin ng mga no-code developers. And it's built upon React. React Native. And so some some of our viewers will ask, no, is is this a output because of you wanna keep busy because you're remote? Or is this more towards a passion because you really want to become an entrepreneur? Parang, parang siguro yun yung parang clarification lang that I wanna ask. No? Para, are you... I don't. I, of course, ako. I am not an advocate of overwork. No, um, does uh -oh. it add overwork or hindi naman? Maybe you can share some ideas about this. I mean, means that you would feel like it's overwork, especially if you're um if you're if the business is kind of like overwhelming in a point. Pero that's why for me, I create systems in a way na parang it doesn't feel like it's working. And at the same time, syempre, when you start a business, should be like it should be fun for you. Kasi oh, oh fun siya sa akin. I like I like no code. I I become an enthusiast with it kasi when I started uh, when I had an idea before that I wanted to create a different kinds of products or different kinds of ideas, I venture into no code. 
So it really depends on the person talaga kung nabibiyo na siya na work. Other people like for example like similar with coffee, 'di ba? You like you love coffee. So you wanted to venture and create your own coffee business while doing it with your day job on the side. So it's it's also a mindset or a perspective. Eh. So for me I love it, I enjoy it. It's more of like it's actually actually a hobby for me sometimes, pero with just a business aspect to it. Pero eventually yes, if given the opportunity, but probably not, not right now kasi we're still bootstrapping everything. So baka maging business siya in the future na maka-help din sa mga new entrepreneurs to create their products out of no code. So I I believe since this is an IT ko IT talk, <laughs> may mga ibang haters ng no code but uh, it's a fun industry and maraming things na pwedeng gawin yung mga uh, mga developers and designers in the future with it. Yeah. I look at no code as like serverless, no? Meaning oh, it, it, serverless. Because, so actually no code is it is for me ah, I interpret no code as serverless because I don't have to think about the It's a function that I can use, no? Um, it's actually just a plugin. It's just, it's, it's a rebrand for me, no? Uh, of, mm-hmm. of a plugin. It's just, it's just called no code. But uh, as long as I'm sure that that service is reliable and re- repeatable, yeah. no? I will definitely use it versus making my own. No problem. Uh, it's a managed service, no? So that's why I think. Uh, so hindi naman. Hater ang no code. Tama siya na yano eh. When I started as a developer in the industry, hater talaga ako kasi parang, <laughs> parang pero kaya nagship na. Well, people change naman po, di ba? So parang server and serverless din nga po. Pero yun nga po. Well, I mean the, the industry naman kasi and that the space or our generation naman. Like for example, I didn't expect that companies are use, using low code, which is Shopify and big commerce to their website, and to think that they're a global brand. Right. So I mean, in the future, naman, I see that there's a potential for no code. It doesn't mean that developers will be useless. I think they're gonna be more valuable. I'm just putting it out there. But for um, for people na parang who has an idea, who has like a lot of great things, na wanted to start but limited yung coding skills nila, they can venture into no code. Right. So naputa na tayo sa no code. Oh, yeah, <laughs> IT yeah, career okay. path. Yeah. 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 Uh, Uh, stitching, stitching naman. No? It's always like, uh, if, parang ano lang to eh, pag when there is a level of coding that gets automated or pushed down, there's always yeah. faster development, parang there's always a new, parang, parang ano, now that um, on-premise IT is shifting away, di ba? Now naman, cloud center of excellence. So parang, yes. there's always, mm-hmm. there's always a new excellent uh, field for IT no um so again sa mga IT na nanonood mo kayo matakot sa no code yes okay uh, matakot diyan oh oh right so um for our audience i'm pretty sure they look at you and they say wow amazing story amazing uh, skill set no um so they want to ask and they they look at you as, as very successful uh I would like you to explain siguro to them uh, how you view your success. Uh, what makes mm. you successful? How do you define success? I wouldn't say sir na successful ako kasi hindi ko pa kasi yaman si Elon Musk. Wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yung ano ko, Elon, Musk, yung Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, mga ganun, di ba? Pero at the same time, um, I believe that success is ang corny eh, pero from within, parang ganun, it, it really, success is all in your mindset. So parang success for you is parang for me some people success for them is having a comfortable life ganun comfortable sila masaya sila um they put roof on their head um kumpleto yung ano medyo matanda yung way of view of success pero for me um success shouldn't be defined by the work or the title or the salary that you have kasi over time magbabago siya eh Like for me, nung naging hired on front end developer, parang yabang yabang ko. Iba kong work classmates, ano lang sila, it is a front end. So, ang ano ko nun. Pero, pero at the same time, it's not about um, the titles and, as a, as, and also the money that you have. It's also like, um, parang success should be defined by you. Yun lang yun. So for me, success is parang I'm able to spend time with my family. I have a good job, a great job that I love. And at the same time, I get to play with the hobby that I have. So I get to work with amazing developers. So for me, success yun. So it really depends on the on to you. 
kung ikaw man nanonood ka nito, ano ba success sa'yo? Right. <laughs> Yun. So yeah. You find your own success, no? Parang ganyan yung sinasabi natin. Not, not a yes. comparison. It's a interper- interpersonal. Huh? Yes, sir. Oo. Masama mag-compare sa ibang tao. Kasi, syempre, iba naman yung career path nila. Iba naman yung journey ng pagpunta nila sa tech, eh. Diba? Hindi naman ibig sabihin na, di, for example, for people venturing to IT, or for example, if you're a viewer na wala kang alam, hindi ka talaga nag-start sa IT. Iba yung course mo, nag-shift ka lang. I mean, I met a lot of great developers na business grads. So, pero dedicated lang talaga sila. As in, um, they just put in the work and the effort. So, for people that are, for, for example, for people na hindi naman IT grad or for people na nag-start pa lang sa IT, don't be afraid to work hard and to be, ano, to be, to learn from everyone. Hindi naman like, porket IT grad ka, IT na talaga yung pupuntahan mo. It really depends on you. So, it's like similar with success. You need to define it to yourself. Parang for me, successful ako kasi in the future gusto ko maging senior developer. So may mga ganun, di ba? Or maging CTO, di ba? So, depends on depends on you. Parang for me, starting point lang naman is the, for, yeah, for the first job, starting point ko siya venturing into technology. So, should be similar with you. Ano ba yung starting point mo? And saan? Right, right, Something right. like that. Yeah. So, our last question is more towards um, it, it, what, what would your advice be If for example, na example you uh, kaka gagraduate ka lang now, now pa lang, now pa lang this year, no? So, mm-hmm. Parang parang bumalik ka sa sa parang ano, bumata ka ulit, ano? Mas, mas lalo <laughs> bata pa naman ako, sir. Uh, mas lalo kang bumata ulit pa uh, nang time machine, no? Um Apo. So, an- ano yung mga ano yung top 3 uh, in order yung advice mo sa sarili mo? And pwede, maybe may ma-pick up din yung audience natin. Um, top three na advice mo sa sarili mo. No? How to be you po. <laughs> okay, sir. Okay, I think for me, number one, um, on a general scale, um, you need to pick the industry that you like to work for. Mm. Why? Because you get to understand how their processes would work and how the business works there. That you can also apply in your daily decisions on your um, daily work. So, for example, for me, when I joined the e-commerce um, e-commerce industry, I've learned a lot about e-commerce. Na very vital and important sa mga project na ginagawa namin. So very important yon. So for example, you're interested in fintech, join fintech companies. Kasi kailangan mo matutunan how the business would work eh. That could be applicable to you while you grow your ano your expertise in that industry, 'di ba? And also maraming way, maraming industry na pwede ma-disrupt dahil sa technology for especially for IT people like you. I mean, I mean it's idealistic, but at the same time Um, marami opportunity right now kasi since everything is digital, uh, marami opportunity kung gusto mong mag-join sa sabong industry, 'di ba? Online sabong. <laughs> Joke lang sir, walang ganoon. Pero bawal pero bata 'yun, no? Diba? Uh, bawal pa 'yun. Maybe <laughs> in the future. Oh, oh. oh. di ate alam, 'di ba, sir? Pero um kung kung interested ka sa AR VR, mag-join ka sa industry na 'yon. So for IT people, if you're if you like a certain topic and you have the technology mindset, sobrang disruptive joining those kinds of industry and making a difference there. Diba? So, I mean, number two, um, find a niche or find a specialization. So, if I were a, if I started in the development, um, in my career, when I started a front-end developer, developer, I wanted to venture into parang um, front-end development, not back-end development, because hindi ko siya strength. Mas strength ko is parang more on the UX side, more on the design side. So mas mas forte ko yon. So you guys, if you guys believe that you guys are good at back end, focus on back end, focus on cloud. Um lagi yung isipin the companies um nagwo-work together siya. So basically uh merong merong for a certain project, may different kinds of components there and magiging importante kayo sa com- component na yon. So regardless ko ng people in mong specialization, be so good at it that people are willing to pay you because you're good at it. Right. At hindi mo kailangan dalhin yung resume mo. Kailangan mo lang dalhin yung mga ginawa mo at pinakita mo. So yung portfolio mo, yung gawa mo, be so good at it that you don't need to explain yourself. You just need to show your output. Yun lang. So yun. <laughs> so given for someone na wala pa PMI, pero eventually I'll get my PMI din. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. Very very interesting ang uh, yung kwentuhan natin ngayon no and uh, very I'm very thankful um sa story and sa sharing mo no and and again guys uh if ever may follow up questions tayo or you know you just want to reach out you can always leave it in the comment section or you know you can also message you can message me um as well no? um it's so good before we end do you have any last you know last shout out or any last plug if you if you want to business <laughs> uh, actually sir um, it's comlab.io so basically um kwento ko lang we, it's actually co-founded by me by um by Daniel Galang and me so we we kasi ako I was working on note code for for fun last year just a hobby hobby lang talaga minsan kasi minsan yung nagiging hobby mo nagiging business mo na rin eh mm. Papansin ko sa mga tao, ganun sila eh. So, si Dim kasi, he was helping me create components for my project. And then basically, we saw an opportunity to actually create those kind of components para to help also other creators or no-code creators na matapos yung project nila. Right. So, um, yun yung mga things na uh, gusto ko lang i-shout out. But other than that, um, Coding Girls, Coding Girls Manila. And of course, I'm part of Coding Girls as well. So, si... Um, if you guys want to join Coding Girls, you can join us. Um, if you're, syempre, f- female, um, women in tech, ano yung shoutout ko? Ikaw din, papa, sorry, si, si Charles kasi nagpapashoutout. Oh, sure, sure, sure. <laughs> ano yung shoutout ko? Oh, Charles on Apulto, yun sir gaming, is so interesado daw ba kayo sa wild, wise wild drift? As mga gamers dyan, um, follow yun Sir Kai or yun Sir Gaming. Yun lang, sir, so far. <laughs> Ilalagay natin yan sa link, no? Para yes, sir. Para mak- 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 agad. Oo. Tapos yun, if you guys wanna learn about no code, definitely message me. Um, We're looking for developers then and designers to contribute. Actually, we're teaching other people how to use no code. Pero we're also needing developers and designers kasi marami pang may, marami pang things na pwede pa tayo i-destruct dun eh. So, if you guys are interested, definitely you guys can join. Yeah. So, yun cool. lang. Cool, cool. Thank you so much. No? And, medyo pasingit lang ako. Um, since Sige, na, sir. Na yung coding girls, no? Do you have any uh, advice or any special, you know, message naman for our women developers, <laughs> no? Kasi, um, you know, maybe the industry feels very male-dominant. But uh, maybe you have, as, as a... Female IT practitioner, do you have any words of encouragement for them? So for female developers, um, don't be afraid to um, share your work and take credit for your work. I mean, at the end of the day, equal lang naman tayo lahat developers. Eh. Maraming may there. Um, it, kung it's, I would say na parang there's no the dominant man yung male, pero I don't think yung female din na outshine yung mga male developers. So, sa, Pil- sa Philippines, hindi naman ganun. I think maraming managers na technology, technology managers are women. And also, marami ding developers na magagaling are also women. So, um, for me lang, it's always important to put yourself out there kasi hindi mo rin alam may expect kung ano yung magiging kakahatan sa future mo, di ba? So, don't be afraid to ask questions then to similar women who's also experiencing um, issues then in technology or kailangan nila ng tulong sa tech, mga ganyan, wag ka ma- mahiyang magtanong kasi may there's a support system there. So especially like the coding girls, um, may support system ka. So for example na may mga tanong ka about sa career, about sa potential um, na experience mo sa workplace, mga ganun, you can definitely ask us. So yeah, so join our FB group actually. <laughs> Yun. Yeah, so I, I'd like to say lang on this but I think IT is a general equalizer, you know, in terms of code, you know, codes are one and zero, um, it doesn't differentiate kung, uh, on your gender and sexuality. I think what I do notice lang, konti na if I may share, is that um, the males are more vish, more, more visual, more, mas nakikita lang sila. No? But there's Correct. actually a lot of female developers and a lot of magaling na female developers. They're Correct. not as visible lang, no? So, mm-hmm. um, that's why thank you so much, uh, Miss Minri, no? For being visible <laughs> as a good Thank you, example. sir. Ako kasi, maingay oh. kasi ako, eh. <laughs> pero yung mga, pero right now, the developers I'm handling, I have good women developers. So, sobrang happy ako. The current company that I have, the women developers yung mga batak. 
So, Ayan. so sila yung batak talaga sa amin, women empowerment. But at the same time, of course, equal pa din naman tayo. It really, it's not about male or female. It's about your skills and your abilities. And if you're able to, of course, at the end of the day, deliver. <laughs> and happy about it, di ba? Right. So, yun. Alright. So, again, thank you so much. Um, and of course, guys, if as we close, no, if you like our content, don't forget to click hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell. Bye, everyone! Bye! <laughs> Ang cool naman ito, sir! May ganun ka pa! <laughs> yeah, meron nga. <laughs>